Just below the St. Stephen's Mission in Arapahoe, Wyoming, an experimental operation is underway to rescue a unique population of sauger, a native fish species and top-level predator in the waters of the Wind, Little Wind, and Papoja Rivers. Not a lot of people know that sauger exist and are a native species to Wyoming because they live in these big muddy rivers and unless you're a fisherman, you don't really know they exist. You know, they're, they're fairly easy to catch. Uh, they're very good to eat. They're a, a very cool looking fish. You know, they have big teeth. They're closely related to a walleye. The project is a cooperative effort between the Shoshone and Arapaho tribes, the Wyoming Game and Fish Department, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. The spawning grounds for the sauger are on the Wind River Reservation, land owned by the Shoshone and Arapaho tribes. We do a lot of work with uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife at Lander and the State Game and Fish. We do uh, a lot of studies with wildlife and the fishing on the reservation. They come out and help us out quite a bit. It's nice to work together to know exactly what kind of numbers we have in the Wind River. The sauger of the Wind Rivers are genetically distinct. They grow larger and slower than the rest of their species. 25, 25.1. And living up to three years longer and at higher elevations than any other sauger known to science. Any species, including sauger, when they're at the fringe of the range, you, kind of, you have low numbers to begin with. And over about a 10 to 12 year period, we saw a drastic decline in sauger numbers in the Wind River drainage population about a 98% decline in catch rates in our reservoir, which is Boyson Reservoir, and about a 75% decline in adult numbers in the river system, which is the Wind and Little Wind Rivers and the Papoja and Little Papoja Rivers. Through a lot of research and monitoring, we found that the population declined because of a lack of natural reproduction. We're pretty confident it was caused by multiple low water and drought years throughout the early 2000s that dewatered their nursery habitat in the lower Wind River and the upper reaches of Boyson. I mean, you can't see, like, the population got so low, we kind of hit panic mode. Uh, we, we didn't want to lose the population, and we think we needed to give them a little bit of help. To provide that help, adult wild sauger are gathered through a process called electrofishing. Electrofishing uses direct current at high voltages that stun and immobilize the fish as they get close to the electrode. Then, they're simply scooped out of the water. The fish are uninjured and generally recover full mobility in about two minutes. Beaver Creek, which is about five miles upstream, puts a lot of sediment in the river, it makes the water a lot muddier, which sauger prefer, and it's good cover. It also puts a lot of sand in the river, and sauger really seem to key in on this stretch of river. Twenty point five inches. Yep, the fifty-eight on this. Oh no, nope, fifty-nine. You're right. Two point oh nine. Each fish is given an individual yep. identification tag, and fin clips are taken to establish a genetic database. The fish are held in a large aquarium for about a week until they're ripe for spawning. Yeah. I might have gotten just over six. Yeah. <laughs> Eggs are stripped from the females and milk from the males for streamside spawning. What's my tag number on that one? 4917. Tag numbers are recorded so each parent cross can be tracked genetically. Water activates the sperm for fertilization. And a mud slurry is added to prevent the eggs from sticking together, allowing each individual egg to be oxygenated. Fertilized eggs are then rinsed with each tube containing a different genetic cross. Once the eggs are free of mud, they're shipped to incubators for hatching. In two to three months, when juvenile sauger reach the fingerling stage at three to six inches long, they'll be restocked into the river system and Boysen Reservoir. So the sauger numbers are increasing. 
and we are collecting juveniles in the wild and we're working with geneticists to match the parents to the offspring. So in a few years, we'll know whether or not our stocking operation is, was needed or not and is healthy.